So recently, Windows has announced that they're coming out with this thing called Copilot Plus, and people are not happy about it. So we're going to watch a video on the new Windows is here, and it's by Austin Evans. Go subscribe to Austin Evans if you enjoyed this video. Let's watch. This might be the biggest update for Windows ever. So there's a lot to talk about here. Not only a brand new lineup of the Surface Pro as well as the Surface Laptop, but on top of that, a huge update to not only the software side, but also what you can do with Windows. So there's a few things that we're gonna talk about today. Copilot Plus. Uh, don't get me wrong, the Surface laptops look really nice, but for some reason, like, I just, I cannot see myself ever getting one. It always seems like that it's such a waste of time to get those kinds of laptops. I'm good with just getting, or tablet, I mean. I'm good with just getting either a laptop to use, like I have a laptop over here that I do video stuff on, and then I got my PC. But if I start looking into the Surface stuff, it's just like, it's just another tablet. For some reason, I hate tablets. I had a tablet, an Android tablet at one point, and I barely even used it. And so I was like, okay, why did I get this? Uh, it, it's stupid. And iPads, uh, it, the, the tablet thing is dumb. PCs are a big one. But beyond that, it is a fundamental sort of rewrite of Windows and what you can do with Windows. It is a brand new chip with the Snapdragon X Elite. And on top of that, a lot of very cool new features. Now, I'll be honest with you, going into this event, I've spent the last couple of weeks trying to really try to wrap my head around things. And there was clearly a big AI sort of reckoning coming to Windows. And that sounds nefarious, but there's a lot of cool features that could have come. And what we've seen mm -hmm. here is something that's a little bit more thoughtful, maybe than I had originally expected, and a lot of very cool features that are being enabled by not only the Snapdragon X Elite Silicon, but also the way that Windows is sort of evolving. Because I think a lot of rumors going into today were that we're gonna see, oh, Windows 12 and this and that, and that's not what we're seeing, right? This is Windows 11, but it is a much, much bigger update than it might look like on the surface. So the, the fancy words and stuff are nice and whatnot, but I think one of the things that people are afraid of is that companies are going to exploit the hell out of this and use this to spy on people because that was the big ordeal. That's what I've been seeing online is that people don't like this because they don't want to get spied on. And it, it seems, fr from what I'm understanding with this Windows 11 update, is that this co-pilot thing is going to be studying everything you're doing, everything you're watching online, and then just applying it to things to kind of just, I guess, be smarter and, you, you know, figure out what you like and stuff. But it seems like that it's really going to, like, it, it worries people. It actually worries me. I'm not saying that I look up like horrible things online. I'm not going on to like the bl black market or something, but I don't want my privacy to be breached by this new Windows 11 update. I don't care about all this AI bullshit. I've played around with AI before just as a joke, but I don't care about it. But if this is something that's going to be implemented and pushed onto people, like it, it's bullshit. I don't like that. Get I made a surface pun. There are a uh, lot yeah, of takeaways, but one of the biggest things to understand is the new name, Copilot Plus PC. Your everyday AI hey, hey, companion. It's really clear. Yeah, because Cortana really worked out real well whenever it came to Windows 10. Like Cortana was on there, or wait, hang on, wasn't she on Windows 7 also? I don't remember, but yeah, Cortana didn't really last too long, and so they think that this Copilot thing is going to last a lot longer than that. Hmm, we'll see easy to understand name that definitely won't confuse anyone. <clears throat> it confuses everybody. Everyone who has <laughs> Copilot PC, that's not, it's not, that doesn't count anymore. You need Copilot Plus. But uh. here's the thing, this is a new class of laptops that you're going to be hearing a lot about in the coming months. So the Copilot and the AI stuff is absolutely a big component of everything. But as far as I'm concerned, an equally big part is what enables it, the Snapdragon X Elite. Now Qualcomm has been making chips for Windows for a few years now. They haven't been all that great. Yeah, from what I've been hearing with a lot of technology lately, like a lot of the chips that they've been coming out with have not been good. And I think that if this is actually successful for whatever reason, I feel like that people are going to try and buy this patent off Windows to, you know, apply it to their own stuff. I really do think that if companies see this and they're like, hey, this is awesome. 
let's apply it to our shit and they're going to do it. But there's going to be those companies that are going to exploit the hell out of their customers. And I don't like that shit. Uh, I don't think that we're entirely ready for AI yet. The concept is still great, but I don't think we're entirely ready for AI yet because people just take advantage of it so bad. Like, there was a news story. I'm, I'm going to say this real quick. I'm sorry for pausing. But th there was this news story about this principal getting arrested or uh, fired from his job. I mean, I, I don't mean arrested, sorry. But fired from his job because someone made an AI version of his voice and made it seem like he was saying a whole bunch of racially motivated crap. Like, people can take advantage of this. Luckily, the person who made the video got caught, but it, it's something that's damaging to someone, and, like, people have to deal with that shit for the rest of their lives. And these companies are going to take this AI, I feel like, and they're going to, you know, exploit people, and I don't think that's right. You know, the promise is good, you know, all day battery life, 5G built in, good performance. <coughs> 5G, oh my the god, it's got the virus! It wasn't very good. Now, part of this is down to the fact that the 8CX line from before just was kind of generally underpowered. An equally big issue, though, was with apps. Probably the biggest difference with Snapdragon chips is the architecture. Unlike the x86 backbone that Intel and AMD have been using for decades, Snapdragon uses ARM, which is the standard on Macs, phones and tablets, but it hasn't really gained traction on the PC. Mm -hmm. That app support really is the biggest yeah, problem. Yeah, Snapdragon Every is really popular in phones. A ton of time has been made with x86 in mind. And unlike Apple, who had the luxury of just announcing to the world that the Mac was switching to Apple Silicon, and if you wanted to stay on Mac, you had to figure it out. Well, in the end, Microsoft <laughs> still have to support everything. Qualcomm is not replacing Intel or AMD. They are all going to coexist. So Microsoft is approaching this okay. in two ways. One is just to encourage developers to support ARM processors, such as the Snapdragon X Elite. Now this is the ideal setup to get the most performance, and it does seem like they made some decent headway here. A lot of major apps, such as Chrome, Photoshop and Resolve, and many, many more, either have already added support or are currently working on it. Now, Microsoft made a very interesting claim to me that 90% of average use minutes would be native. That sounds great, depending on what kind of user you are. Because yeah, I was going to say, like, it, I, I'm i on the computer, like, all the goddamn time. <laughs> so, it, for context, like, I, I'm out here. The, this is my own little space and everything, right? Well, the only way that I have entertainment, really, because I don't really watch TV. Every time that I watch anything on TV, whether it's a movie or a TV show, they just all suck in my opinion. So I don't watch TV. But whenever I'm on the computer, I could type in whatever I want and it's there. It's available. And that's what I want to see. And so I would be kind of curious if they implemented all this stuff or if I got a device that has the Snapdragon X Elite in it. Like, I wonder how that's going to optimize everything because it's just going to be like, oh, hey, you watch this on YouTube. Here's five million results <laughs> that you may be interested in. I'm pretty sure that may happen. Because apps that are not optimized include basically every game ever and years and years of older apps that either just aren't ever... If I can't play Temple Run on it, I don't want it. ...going to be updated, or maybe they just have too small of a team to deal with ARM just yet. So for that, there's the Prism emulator. Now this is very similar in nature to the Prism emulator that Apple used to do the exact same thing on the Mac side, emulating older Intel apps on Apple Silicon. And in fact, Microsoft actually claimed that performance is essentially the same as Rosetta. So what uh. this does is essentially emulate pretty much any older app on a Snapdragon powered device. Now this isn't strictly a brand new thing. X86 and X64 emulation for ARM has been a thing for a little while, but it's been a significantly worse experience. This is for a couple of Yeah, it, it, it's because we're not ready for this shit. Like nobody, first, okay. I say this also because we have had so many companies give us promises lately that say, oh, we're going to come out with this, whether it's a gaming company or whether it's like a tech company or something. They say, oh, we're going to come out with this brand new thing. Everybody's going to want it. You got to invest in it. You got to move yourself up in the world. You got to do this. You got to do this. And it comes out to be garbage every time. Every time there's something good, it just turns into garbage. And I feel like that this is going to be one of those things again. Reason. So I don't trust it. The left a little bit of performance on the table. And the previous chips were, well... 
kind of slow. Both of these things have been improved. Yeah, I believe according it. According to Microsoft, at least, thanks to the raw power of X Elite and improved emulation, unoptimized apps should perform roughly on par with a last generation Core i7. Now, of course, I definitely want to spend some hands-on time for myself because I'm almost positive that there'll be some weird edge cases or apps that will work or whatever, but in theory, as long as apps run pretty quickly, it'll be essentially seamless to the end user. And when you okay. happen to be running an optimized app, which more and more are coming online every day, then it'll be just that much quicker. All of this is a lot of work, but the upside is significant. You should be getting- I, I, will, I, I will say one thing. I, I have noticed whenever like things run like much smoother and stuff on my phone, because I have an iPhone now, and this thing is so much faster than my old Samsung phone. But it's also because that I go with the straight talk method, which is just the prepaid phone method. But uh, whenever I first got this, I mean, it's still fast as hell, even though I've had it for just a few months and I've been running it like crazy. This phone is super fast. I could download the same app on this and my Samsung, and this would just be much faster. So it that's at least a cool feature to have, like how much quicker that things load up. Just like boom, 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 done. 4K, 60 frames, all that shit. The performance, but also 5G built into some devices, and importantly, significantly better battery life. So I'm here with the Surface Pro. That's also something I've noticed too. Like all these tech companies, they don't do anything with battery life. Like battery life has been struggling on everything. I, I have a laptop in the house. And, like, I can leave it unplugged for probably, like, two or three hours, barely even doing anything on it, and that battery just, just dead. It's so crazy. I, I, I don't know why that we can't just get, like, 10,000 milliamp hour batteries in every single device. That would just be so much easier. Less charging and more usage. Well, let me give you a little demo of some of the AI features. So, there are three <coughs> ones to talk about. The first, and probably the most impressive, is recall. Now, recall requires a little bit of explanation. So the way yeah, that recall I... works is that using the power of the NPU, it is always paying attention to what you're doing. It is going to help you find stuff that you've done in the past. Now, that sounds reasonable enough. Maybe... Not really. I, I don't want it to track it. Listen, if I want to look up dirty videos on here, I don't want the computer to be like, oh, hey, we saw you like these dirty videos. Here, we're, we're going to give you all like these and like track all my shit. No, I don't want it to see that. No. Maybe a little bit creepy, but let me show you how it works. And uh, no, it's very creepy. You don't creepy. have to be too concerned. <laughs> All right. So this is recall. So this is uh, the basic page so I can scroll through. And the neat part is as I scroll back, I can see pretty much everything I've done. Now, this is obviously not my device. This is a demo, but you can see. That's it crazy. It records everything on the, the screen. Before. This will save for as long as you want, provided you have the storage space for it. So the way this works is that the NPU is taking a screenshot of whatever's on your screen every little while. So it's smart, so it's going to be able to only take a screenshot when it detects motion. What it does is it can determine whatever I am looking at. So this is inside of an Excel spreadsheet. So if I wanted to, I could copy any text or whatever over, or I can just automatically open it up using this button, and it will... I feel like that this is a glorified print screen button. Like, okay, there's this button on the keyboards that says print screen and you can take a screenshot that's how people usually make thumbnails for youtube and that's what i've been doing to make thumbnails for youtube i just take a quick screenshot like i feel like this is just a glorified version of that because i don't see what the actual purpose is in this except for like just taking screenshots for you and then if it's continuously doing it and it uses up all your space then what you got to go and delete all the shit you got to cancel all of that no no it it's a cool concept in a way, but it's just a glorified print screen button. That's all it is. It, maybe if you forget something and you didn't press the print screen, it's like, oh, shit. Oh, my God. Ah, I meant to look at that thing from earlier, but now I forgot and I can't find it. Then, yeah, yeah, that would be nice. But otherwise, I think this is useless. Pull that exact file up. So the way to think about this is the computer is constantly keeping a record of what you're doing and say I want to go back and find something I did two or three days ago or a week or a month ago, theoretically, it will do it. So say I want to go look for bread. I know that I was looking at some photos of bread last week or whatever. Well, you can see just how fast it shows up. So I have a couple of different matches. 
I have text match, so I could pull up any of these things, and the word bread was listed. So you can see and you want to know something? This seems also very nice, but whenever someone else gets it, they're going to have so many issues with it. I guarantee you. Like, for some reason, I feel like that he's getting, like, the very neat and tidy version of this, but someone is going to have issues. I know it. I'm yeah, waiting on it. Highlight Someone's going to have an that. issue with It'll this. It'll also give me visual matches. So if I go right here, I can see that it can tell that this is a photo of bread. Now this- mm -hmm, That is a photo of bread. <laughs> is a really cool idea because it is constantly taking screenshots of your actual system. You can do this for chats. You can do this for uh, websites. You can do this for apps. Pretty much anything that Windows can take a screenshot of, it can save here. Now, Probably a big question you have. You want you want to know something? I could take a screenshot. Look at that! Look at that! Screenshot! Screenshot! There we go. <laughs> Is yikes! That's kind of creepy. Now there's certainly some privacy concerns with this. Uh but yeah, uh, there's a lot of privacy and, concerns. Uh, maybe it might make you feel better. Or maybe it won't. When you come up here to the options menu, you can go into the settings. So it's actually built into your privacy and security. There are a number of settings that you have to play with. So first of all, you can just turn this feature off. Now this is going to be only yeah, on I, I don't want that. devices with the NPU. So the reason for that is that this is all happening locally on device. So none of this goes up to the internet. Microsoft can't see it. It's all encrypted. Uh, that, I don't believe that. I do not believe that for one bit. I do not believe that Microsoft is not gonna be tracking this shit. Microsoft is going to be watching every single thing that you do. I already know it. Everyone knows it. People have that big complaint about it. And other companies are going to be watching everything you're doing too. Because Microsoft could get, uh, like, DDoSed or, uh, what, what's the word? Oh, oh, what's the word? You, you know what I mean. Like, they can get hacked. And then people can, like, have all their information put out there. Alright, I, I don't believe for one minute that it's just going to be locally locally on device i'm not saying he's given false information but i don't believe it um you could imagine a lot of privacy concerns if yeah a lot this. so first of all you can just turn this off second of all you have the ability for the storage and you can change that so right now with the last two weeks or whatever it's only taking about 56 megabytes and the reason for that is it's not doing a constant video recording of your screen yeah it's just it's taking pictures every little while it's not always taking screenshots so the way it works is when it determines that there's some new text on screen that there's enough pixels that have changed it'll take a quick screenshot and save that but if you want mm -hmm. you can set the maximum storage for your snapshots i was told that 25 gigs depending on how much you use your system could be several months of content jesus um, which is cool but you can change that to be whatever you want so you can go up to 150, 150 gigabytes on top of that, what are you going to need to be seeing 150 so gigabytes you worth of in your system you don't want to keep the snapshot where you delete it over the last hour last day last month whatever you want to do and importantly and something i would 100 percent do is set some filters so you can say hey don't take snapshots of edge i don't want you to see what i'm doing on edge because if you see that i'm wa mm. watching hours and hours of danky videos, then I don't want anyone to know that. So Jesus Christ. <laughs> I don't even know who Denki is, but that's funny. See, that, uh, okay, it's funny because people are also probably upset. Like, I made the joke about, like, seeing naughty videos or whatever, but people are probably upset about that. And But they're probably going to be happy if they have this feature that they can turn that off because... They they don't they don't want Windows to take screenshots of that. There's gonna be people with weird fetishes and stuff like that that they don't they don't want their stuff to be taken screenshots of and sent over to Microsoft. And then Microsoft gets hacked and then what? And then what? Then you have all these weird videos and pictures and shit. Don't look at my edge. <laughs> Go ahead and block out edge. Don't take any screenshots. On top of that, if you want to be a little bit more specific, <clears throat> you can add specific websites. So I'm gonna add YouTube. Don't keep track of my YouTube search history. Thank you very much. Yeah, and yeah. There, as long as you're using a browser that's supported, it will not do that. This is a big feature. Honestly, one of the bigger features that this enables. And I understand that there's probably going to be a lot of people who are concerned about this from a privacy perspective. The way I understand it, yeah, it's happening 100% on device. At no point does any of this information go to the cloud. So, from what you know. From what you know, it may not go to the cloud. It shouldn't go to the cloud. It shouldn't. That's the keyword. It shouldn't go to the cloud. But guess what? 
it's going to. There's going to be some sort of loophole that not everybody knows about, and Microsoft is going to take all your shit. I guarantee you, it's going to go to the cloud. People are going to lose all their information because of shit going to Microsoft. Whenever this is fully released, if it's not fully released, or if people start using this more, it's it's going to be bad. It's going to be bad. I'm telling you. On top of that, you can use it as much or as little as you want. We'll see how robust the system is. Uh, I would be completely lying to you if I said that I was 1,000% confident in it at day one, right? But this yeah. is a feature that I think has a lot of- I don't think anyone's there. confident so in it. If I want to go back through Especially on day one. that I was working on a couple of weeks ago. If I want to find a screenshot or I just literally want to type in the word car because I know I watched a car video three weeks ago and it will find that. Like that's a really powerful feature. Close Kate match to is car. It's not the most exciting app in the world. However, it's actually got a major new feature in co-creator. So the way this works is really neat. So again, this is running. Oh God, now they mess with Microsoft Pay? If I want to, I can just say car in a tunnel at sunset. So normally, and you've been able to do this in the past, you can just put in a prompt like that and you'll get something spit out. But the way this works instead is it actually uses that in addition to what you want to draw. So if I start drawing this, um, I'm gonna have a lot okay. of confidence in my drawing ability. Okay. So if I give that just a second, what you'll see here is that my scribble is obviously terrible. But on this side, this is actually not bad. The idea here is that not only is this being done. So it tries to device. transform so what you have the the into an actual art picture. Kind of silly one. They want to make sure that you're not doing any nefariousness with this. So what happens is when you give it the draw prompt, a penis, it draw a penis, to do it to make sure that you're not asking it to do anything too nefarious, shall we say. So you do actually need an internet connection for this, but all the actual processing is happening on device. So if I turn that creativity back up. Yeah, yeah, I, I want to know what people are nefariously doing. Penis going through tunnel and just a, draw a giant dick <laughs> having to go through a tunnel. <laughs> you can see that the image that I'm getting here, even though this is a terrible scribble, look at that, that looks sick. That is incredibly cool. So It is cool. It, boom. That's the go. thing. The, the concept is window. cool. The concept is cool. I'm not discrediting the concept. I'm just saying that people are not going to be happy with this. I'm I'm telling you, this is going to be a big blunder. Nobody's going to use this shit. Everybody's going to turn it off. They don't, they don't want that shit on the computer. Like, okay, cool. Yeah, you can make, like, at something. You're, you're taking away the creativity of people. You're taking away the creativity. People are not going to have creativity in this world because all they got to do is just scribble a bunch of bullshit on Microsoft Paint and boom, there's your picture. It... People, people are getting lazier. They are letting the technology win. We're going to start looking like WALL-E where we're all fat rolling around in floating cars and all the robots are going to be taking over shit for us. Good Lord. This level feature that again, leveraging the power of the NPU on board of the system allows you to caption anything <coughs> Windows can hear. So let me actually show you. I don't want Windows to hear so nothing. Turn on microphone audio. And if you look at top here, you will now tell you what I'm saying. So, hello, my name is Austin, and this is what it looks like as you see the live captions being put onto the screen at this time. The cool part about this is that not only does it work with my microphone, it obviously will work with anything that I'm listening to. So the way this works is really cool. It's able to use that, mm. and importantly, it will do live translation. So we got a demo earlier of someone who fluently moved between English and Spanish. It paused like half a second and immediately started translating that Spanish. These are just some of the things that are made possible mm -hmm. with an NPU. You can hear that so much, but the idea- that I, I've have already heard it a lot. <laughs> running locally on device at super low power, especially pull up task manager. You can actually see how little power it takes so my CPU and my GPU are essentially not even being used, right? So I've got 4% on my CPU, 1% uh, of my GPU, and the NPU is doing what, three, 4%. It's almost nothing to be able to do something mm -hmm. as you think complex. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't think that it would need like very much memory to go off of though. Like it, it's, just, it's just a chip and it's just following what you're saying. It's not like it has to work 100% of the time. Otherwise that damn computer will overheat and it'll die. Now, I would be curious to see in a month if this goes up, like if for someone who is just using it regularly, like not like doing a whole bunch of shit with it. But I want to know if this actually goes up because who knows if maybe the laptop may overheat. Who knows?
Netflix is doing live captions and translations. So these are just some of the AI features that are being built in. But importantly, these are just the ones that are built into Windows on day one. Mm -hmm. Because the NPU is now a first class citizen in Windows, there are so many more things that I'm sure will be coming down the pipeline. And of course, so many third party apps that can leverage this kind of tech to do all kinds of stuff with almost no latency and to be able to do it with theoretically quite a lot of security. At a baseline, Microsoft is branding and spending. I, I don't trust Microsoft's version of security though. Like their security means nothing to me because all these companies get hacked and they're just like, oopsie, oopsie, your stuff is gone now. Like, I, I, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I, I don't know if I want any of those devices with this NPU in it. A lot of money to promote. These is the gold standard of PCs. To get the Copilot Plus branding, you'll need a couple of things. 40 tops or more on your NPU and 16 gigabytes of RAM, which of course you'll find on the new Surface models, as well as a number of other OEMs who are also taking part. And now, Lenovo's right doing now, it too? This basically means that the system needs to be powered by a Qualcomm Snapdragon X Elite device, but soon there will be other Snapdragon and AMD options, as well as Intel coming a little later this year. Now, if 40 tops on your NPU doesn't mean much to you, well, you're probably not alone. Yeah, I, I don't have an NPU, or do I? I don't think I have an NPU. Let me let me open up Task Manager and see what what all is going on here. Uh, yeah, I don't have an NPU, so yeah, that doesn't apply to me. Honestly, it's probably worth me making an entire video breaking down tops and you know processors and why you're going to be hearing these phrases everywhere going forward. But the short answer is this. Just like how in the past when you're shopping for a PC, two of your biggest considerations when it comes to performance are your CPU and your GPU. Well, it's time to add the NPU to that list. So when it comes to oh hardware, God. there's a lot to go over. So let's start with these brand Building new computers devices. is gonna so be a pain in the two. ass we now. We have the brand new Surface Pro. Technically this is just the new Surface Pro, although it is really the 11th gen, as well as we have the new Surface Laptop, which is the seventh generation. So. There is a much more substantial redesign of the laptop. So it now has a much larger screen to body ratio. You can see just how small mm. these bezels are. And I'll be honest with you. Oh, those bezels, bezels, guys. Look how thin those bezels are. Oh my goodness, those bezels. Eight inch version looks sick because I've always liked the Surface Laptop, but it's kind of been a little bit big and chunky, but now this is the 15, but even the 15 is significantly smaller. Yeah, but see, I could do more on a laptop than I can with the Surface Pro because the Surface Pro, like, I would be afraid it would get, or the Surface tablet, whatever, I would be afraid it would get broken. I, I would be wanting to make sure the screen wasn't all screwed up or whatever because it would be a touch screen and yada yada. Now, just give me a goddamn laptop. Open, do my shit, close, done. Desktop, turn it on. Do my shit, turn it off, done. That's it. I don't, I don't need tablets and shit. This is just overpriced, like, extra shit that I don't care about. Now what's really interesting about both of these devices is that they are Snapdragon only. In the past, there was a little bit of a mix between you had AMD on certain options and until there was the 8CX before. All of that is gone. It is just Snapdragon X across the board. Now both these devices start with the Plus, although if you upgrade, you do get the Elite, which is basically the same chip, 10 core versus 12 core. How, how, how much is it? How much is it? That's what I want to know. If it's over $200, that's wild a little bit of extra performance now that i think is very telling well like, maybe not maybe not i'll take that back maybe, maybe over 200 dollars won't be too wild because i've seen laptops everywhere that are like eight nine hundred bucks i think this one over here was like 500 so comes to how strongly microsoft feel not only about the copilot plus initiative but also just about what they're getting with qualcomm and snapdragon because you can think about the uh the conversations that are being had with some of the other partners, such as AMD and Intel. Mm -hmm. And while I can imagine. of course will be additional <laughs> Copilot Plus PCs, um, Snapdragon and Qualcomm, I think, should be very happy that they're getting this sort of uh, shine because there's a lot of emphasis on the surfaces going Snapdragon first, at least with these devices. So let me break it down. I'll go over the actual Pro itself. So you have a few options here. So there's an improved webcam. You also now have an OLED if you upgrade. So the base model still is an LCD, but if you go up to the OLED, it is model, very shiny. OLED, it's just it's there's too also much. the actual uh, keyboard. Hey, hang on a minute. And since since he's not really saying anything about it, what does the new Surface uh, tablet go for? 
or Surface Pro. Oh, oh <laughs> there we go. 13, 13 core Ultra 5, 16 gigabyte, $1,485.99. That's crazy. A used one is going for $299. $875. Refurbished, $288.28. 32280 that is wild that is so crazy yeah I, I, don't, I don't i don't need that i don't need that that's too much that's too much board which has been changed so this version is the slightly higher end version which has if i can carefully take it off without knocking it over um it actually works wirelessly now so there's actually three keyboards it's slightly confusing there's the base keyboard there's the keyboard with the pen storage and then there's this which will allow you to not only use it via bluetooth but also folds up nice and neat here it's a cool feature, although it's a little bit on the pricey side. And uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. To state forever that I wish that every Surface came with the keyboard in the box because I can't imagine who would buy this without a keyboard. See that that's also like Apple. If you need certain accessories from Apple, like for instance, my phone doesn't have the headphone jack. All right, and so I need to have an accessory to play music in the car. But to get that accessory, I got to pay like $25. You know what? Let's look that up too. Let's look that up. Uh, Google.com because it doesn't go there automatically. And uh, iPhone uh, aux adapter. Let's see how much it is. Oh, wow. It actually went down in price. Seven dollars and forty-eight cents. That is crazy. Or you can get this one, which is twenty-seven ninety-nine. But I mean, everybody has seen them. Like, okay, yeah, I got all these adapters and stuff like that here. That's at least nice that everything's gone down in price. But everybody's seen them by now. Everybody knows that every accessory that you get, it doesn't matter if it's Microsoft or Apple, it's just going to be pricey as shit. It's, it's what like fifty bucks for the goddamn keyboard? I bet it is. Now, outside of that, the hardware is actually relatively similar looking on the surface. It is still with a fan inside, it's actively cooled, even when you've got the Snapdragon silicon, but it makes sense, right? This one, straightforward. The laptop, I think, is a little bit more interesting. So you've got a really nice mm -hmm. port selection. So you've got a couple of USB 4, you've got a USB-A aux, thank you for keeping the aux, as well as you've got yourself the Surface connector, and on the 15, you've got yourself a micro SD. That alone is great. It also does have the upgraded touchpad, as uh, does the high-end keyboard on the uh, Surface Pro. That's fancy. The keyboard lights up. Keyboard, I will say on That's why it's 50 bucks. Good. And the display. So it's a 120 hertz display. I'll be honest with you. When I first saw it, I was like, oh man, that OLED looks great. And then they told me, nope, it's LCD. I am legitimately surprised. It is a very nice looking display, very bright. If I crank up this brightness, it is going to probably clip the camera real hard. Like it is Jesus. properly bright. Now that big is wild. This is LCD, I think, is price. Both the Surface Pro as well as the laptop start at nine nine. <laughs> oh and my god! So the basic configuration. Oh my god! Nine hundred and ninety nine dollars for a laptop that can now understand what you're doing and possibly take all your information. That is amazing. Give me twelve. <laughs> That is crazy! A thousand dollars for that? You must be out of your mind! They come with the Snapdragon X Plus, and importantly, 16 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. One of my traditionally biggest issues with the Surface lineup has been that the base models were next to useless because eight gigs of RAM is just not enough for anybody, especially when it comes to Windows. Yeah. So both of these models come with 16 gigs, 256. I, I, I'll give them credit for that. At least they're doing 16 gig because yeah, eight gig would not help anybody at all. I got 16 gigs of RAM in this computer, but with everything I'm doing, I mean, hell, you guys have probably seen in this video or other videos that I clip out sometimes. It's because I do a lot of extensive shit on here. And sometimes it can't take it. Honestly, a very usable spec. Of course, it'll be a little bit more expensive once you start upgrading the SSDs and you know, go up to the OLED and blah, blah, blah. But like, you're blah, not going to really get either blah, blah, of blah. these configurations in any kind of like terrible, unusable state, right? And I think that is something to be applauded, even though upgrade pricing could be a little bit cheaper. Something else I think is really worth mentioning is upgradeability and repairability. So the Surface Pro still has a little upgrade door for the SSD, which is nice. Now, the Surface laptop crazy. has no such door. It does have an upgradable SSD that will void your warranty, 
but oh. you can actually get at it, of course, by voiding your warranty, so you should do it 366 days later. Um, the feet are actually magnetic. So instead of using but like- why, why would I want to wait 366 days? If I want to upgrade it, I want to upgrade it. I don't want to wait 366 days. Let me upgrade it now. Th this whole voiding warranty shit, it's like, well, don't put a goddamn shitty SSD in there that I'm going to have to replace. Like glue to keep the feet on. They're actually magnetic. They come off and then the screws underneath and you pop off that back panel. One of the only things I've actually removed is a little bit of a weird one. It no longer supports the pen on the Surface laptop. Now, really? I think a big reason for that is that you actually had to have these little tiny wires across the screen for the actual pen for the capacitive uh, touch and whatnot. It's still a touchscreen, mind you, but it is no longer uh, compatible with the pen. So just a small note. Of course, if you really want to use the pen, you should be using the actual Surface Pro 9. Now, 9? 11? Yikes, I'm a couple years behind. Now, the last thing I want to talk about when it comes Ooh, to Ooh, you messed up. Is the actual breadth and depth of the ecosystem. Yuck. So on top of these Surface devices, which of course we're getting early hands-on of, there are going to be a number of other OEMs, including Samsung, including Lenovo and Dell and all kinds of people, Asus, who are going to be announcing devices probably around the time this video goes live. The only one I can personally speak to is the Lenovo Yoga 7X. Yeah, they're, yeah they see this and they're like, oh, hey, now we need to announce our shit so that way people will buy our shit because we have this fancy Snapdragon NPU bullshit like, these companies are so stupid. Now, hypothetically, I may have been able to spend some time with this before the embargo, and this is also a Snapdragon powered device. Now, my sample is very, very, very early, so I'm gonna not speak on it a lot, besides the fact that a lot of these same features, a lot of these same sort of advantages in using the Snapdragon Silicon do come across to that. So even though these surfaces look very impressive, and I will say that the price point is worth really reiterating, right? I think they're being very aggressive with $1,000 configurations of laptops that are actually good, unlike previously, where you had to spend $1,300, $1,400, $1,500 to get something usable. But I will say that that, uh, that Yoga 7X. Yeah, stay... even, even then, I, I still think that that's ridiculous, having to pay $1,000 for a goddamn laptop. Like, come on, man. Like, there's laptops at Walmart that are so much cheaper than this. We just looked at some of the Surface Pros that are refurbished and stuff, and they can get down to $300, $400. There, there's ways for this stuff to go down in value. It doesn't have to cost so much just so that way I can have the goddamn computer talk to me. Okay? Like, that's wild. Yeah, my computer itself is probably worth a grand, but it's because of all the stuff that's in it. Like, it, it's it's a powerful-ass PC. But you don't see me flashing it around and being like, I spent $1,000 on this. No, because that's crazy, especially for a laptop. Stay tuned. I'm going to be taking a look at that once it's not quite so uh, <laughs> in such beta form. But the time that I've spent using the Snapdragon X Elite, it's the real deal. I think that's kind of sort of my general thought, that there's a lot of performance there. You have obviously all the cool Windows AI features, but on top of that, I don't care about it just AI feels though. Snappy and fluid in a way that Pe people may like the AI thing, but I don't. I, I feel like that people are way too invested in this AI bullshit. Like, oh, AI is the future. AI is this. AI is this. It's just nobody knows how to use it. Everybody takes advantage of it. It is so crazy. Can we just? Be normal human beings and quit having the technology do all this shit for us. Like, come on, guys, really? Typically, you only get when you're running, oh, you know, a big, it? Yeah, I big muted CPU it. and GPU and yada yada yada. Right? Like, what you're getting here is performance. You're getting a lot of really cool features, and importantly, devices that the fans are almost never kicking off. You know, the battery that is actually legitimately all day. So when Apple Silicon dropped in 2020, it was an absolute game changer. It wasn't just about the performance leap, which was really substantial. It was also about the incredible battery life, paired with the fact that you got full performance even when you're unplugged. As much as you may or may not want to actually use you, it. You, you, you know, I, I may actually get an Apple computer. I, I may, or an Apple laptop. My, my mom swears up and down by hers and that it's really good. I'm starting to get used to iPhones and stuff like that again. I may get an Apple laptop. Mac, since 2020, MacBooks really have set a new benchmark. Now, are these Snapdragon-powered systems going to give us that same leap? Well, in all honesty, probably not, at least immediately. 
My understanding is that you'll still see some power management from Windows when you're running on battery, which will cut performance a bit when you're unplugged. But this is a massive step forward. The competition between Qualcomm, Intel, AMD, and Apple is an arms race. Qualcomm with joins Intel and Apple in PC chip race with NVIDIA and AMD in the running. The San Diego-based chip maker revealed that the Snapdragon X Elite is its most powerful chip on or system on chip. That's quite that's crazy. <laughs> Quasi years. What the hell we've seen more improvements today? to laptop performance and battery life than in the entire decade beforehand. And believe me when I say that Microsoft didn't rebuild huge ow, chunks ow, ow. of Windows just for a few ow. random Snapdragon laptops. It really does seem like ARM powered Windows devices are the future, and we'll likely see everyone from NVIDIA to AMD join the party before too much longer. I mean, who doesn't want a laptop with performance and battery life? Now, are there concerns? Um, I, 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 I like having the performance and battery life, but I would like ha to have better performance for like desktop users and stuff and quit making things so overpriced. Absolutely. My hands on time with the X-Elite has been limited by very unfinished software and hardware. So while my initial impressions are really promising, we absolutely have to wait for the final products before I can make a definitive judgment. Yeah. There are a lot of questions and there's also a lot of legitimate concerns specifically when it comes to the emulated app performance and really how quickly developers actually want to embrace ARM. Not to mention, there's probably gonna be a lot of hesitancy with a lot of, I don't want to say like average consumers, but like a lot of people are used to buying laptops with an Intel or an AMD sticker on it. And as soon as you drop a Snapdragon badge, well, that doesn't necessarily mean a lot to a lot of people. So my expectation is that it might be a little bit of a slow ramp on these things. But here's the thing. Probably. Microsoft is betting big on ARM and they're really the last holdouts. Mobile and Mac have been switched over for a while, and it seems natural that Windows is the last domino to fall here. Now, I'm not saying that you should drop everything and toss your existing laptop in the garbage just yet, especially because- I, I won't, I won't, I, I, I agreed. Don't, don't toss your laptop in the garbage because, well, that's just not good for the environment anyway, but we don't know, like everybody is not, well, I think there's a good portion of people that get it, but there's also a good portion of people that don't get it. They're just like, ooh, shiny laptop, let's get it. No, you don't know what the laptop is going to be like just yet. So don't get rid of your new lap or your latest laptop and get this new one just yet. Because I guarantee you there's going to be bugs, there's going to be problems, there's going to be issues. Microsoft is going to see your shit and you're not going to like it. And then you're going to be upset that you got the laptop. Because Intel and AMD are not only improving things at an impressive rate, but they also will have their own Copilot Plus PCs that have all the AI goodies that you ever hoped for. But here's the thing. This is a big deal that is really worth keeping an eye on because things are moving at an incredibly rapid rate. So that, my friends, mm -hmm. is a look at what you've got with these brand new Copilot Plus PCs. If you really break it down, it's very simple. These devices are going to have significantly better battery life, they're more efficient, they're going to run cooler, quieter, and there's still going to be tons and tons of performance on tap. On top of that, there's also a huge amount of new features when it comes to the Windows AI stuff. So, you know, you think about some of the stuff, you know, this is sort of V1 of, right? Like we're gonna see more and more apps take advantage of the MPU. We're also going to see more and more features on Windows to take advantage of this sort of overall architecture. See, I already like deal with some of the AI stuff whenever I Google things on like Edge or even on my uh, other browser, Brave. Like, uh, whenever I would Google something or if I would search something, sometimes it'll pop up and it'll start telling me these things like by itself here. Hang on, let, let me see if I can get one going. Uh, let's see how, oh, here, how tall is the world's largest building, <laughs> large jets, yeah, see, look, it's already getting it, stop responding, no, keep going, world's tallest building is the Burj Khalifa in Dubai, United Arab Emirates. It stands at a total height of 829.8 meters. See, it, it, it's right there. Like, you just do a search and it's like, boom, right there. That's fine. That's fine. Whatever. I'm okay with that part, but, like, following what I'm doing on the computer and, like, taking the screenshots and stuff and being like, oh, don't worry. This is only on your PC. Microsoft doesn't look at this. We don't see nothing. We we see nothing. We, we hear nothing. La, 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 la. No, that's a lie. Microsoft is definitely watching what you're doing. 
Let's take a look at this. Sure, recall definitely won't be abused by companies mistrusting their employees. Yeah, yeah. These companies are going to be screwing over their clientele, their employees, every everybody. Tracking the sheets out of their employee, out of their employee. Okay, if they if as if there was not existing software that could do this today. Well, yeah, of course, but they're just making it easier on these companies now. Before Windows 11, adware virus. Windows 11, adware feature. <laughs> That's crazy. A recall feature sounds like a data privacy nightmare. Yeah, yeah, it definitely does because it's just watching everything that you're doing. I, I don't I don't really care for it. You could turn off recall today. I give them a year before they make it mandatory after how much data they farm from it. Sure, the images remain local, but it doesn't mean what is detected on them isn't sent over. It's all going to be on there. No matter what you do, no matter how you do it, Recall is going to take all your shit, put it on your computer, put it through a secret cloud that they're not telling you about, and everybody's going to see your shit. That, that's all there is to it. I don't like it, but this was a very informative video, so I definitely would recommend seeing it. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know how this is going to pan out, but I don't really want these laptops. <laughs>